Recently, Domain published an article titled how our energy efficient homes are a breeding ground for COVID-19. Let's unpack this. So Joseph, what are your thoughts about this title? How our energy efficient homes are a breeding ground for COVID-19. Well, this is a very sensational heading for an article but I think the title itself already discredited the article because COVID-19 is a virus and virus only breed in bodies with cells. So if you say it's a breeding ground in the house, uh, it's not quite correct. The first sentence is obviously critical in any article, right? So it says here, home building regulations need an urgent overhaul as the modern construction of airtight homes to improve energy efficiency is providing the perfect environment for the spread of COVID-19 through families, experts say. Well, it is very, very interesting they make that claim. Let's take one step back. In an hospital environment, which type of facility will the hospital send COVID-19 patients into? Probably isolation rooms. And what is the characteristics of isolation rooms? Airtight. So I don't see how they make that claim um, valid. I think the problem is more about ventilation than whether the building, the room is airtight or not. Well, let's keep going. So, so I mean, th there's a connection between air leakage and ventilation, right? Or, or they're, they're completely two different things. This is something that a lot of people get confused. Yeah. But by definition, ventilation is a controlled mechanism that allows you to bring in outside fresh air yeah. and circulate those air within an enclosure. Mm. That's what we call ventilation. Mm. But air leakage is very obviously uncontrolled. Yep. So when you try to mix up the controlled and uncontrolled, you may actually got a um, negative effect. So what we're basically saying here is that for ventilation to work, you need an airtight environment that you're ventilating. Yes. And let's take um, another look at that. Um, to make it easier for normal people, common people to digest this, I would say, for um, measurable directed ventilation, an airtight building is way better than a leaky building. Because in a leaky building, you put um, good quality filtered fresh air into a room. You don't know where it will go, whether it goes through the wall and just go outside direct or leaking through a different wall to sneak into other rooms in the building. You have absolutely no control, no understanding. So I think what we're gonna also touch about in this video is some of the potential ways that you may be able to stop COVID-19 spreading if one of the occupants in a household is infected. But we'll, we'll cover that towards the end of the video. Yep. One of the major points that's in this article, and I'm sure there'll be many others similar to it, is that more of the focus needs to go into ventilation and air circulation. And another part of this article, they've uh, quoted someone who's saying, for example, achieving better ventilation may conflict with objectives for better energy efficiency performance, such as tighter building ceiling that becomes more dependent on mechanized airflow systems. As governments grapple with the new COVID-19 policy challenges, MBV will continue to contribute to the discussion on these types of critical issues. What are your thoughts on this? I mean, they're basically saying that if we've got more ventilation, then air tightness is insignificant and not a requirement. Once again, ventilation is you know where you get the air from, you know the quality of air you're bringing in, and where you want the air being distributed. So to some extent, 
I can agree with their sentiment, but they didn't explain it clearly. When you bring in extra outdoor air into a house, of course, it will increase the energy consumption. Mm. But we always need to have a balance between energy efficiency and occupants' health and safety. Mm. And occupants' health and safety always trump the energy efficiency. Mm. Otherwise, we can just live outside in the tent. Why bother to build a house in the first place? The other issue is, is that with the way we build today, without a centralized ventilation system, you're not guaranteed in any way the level of CO2 that's, that's in a room when, it's in, when, when you're using a room. Like, and that, that can build up quite fast. Well, this is very true because traditionally, even today, our building code are based up on the presumption that ventilation is provided by operable windows, mm. particularly for residential buildings. Mm. And yes, opening windows can provide you with ventilation, but it's to a large extent very unpredictable mm. because of the wind direction, wind speed, how wide you open your window, mm. or even what is happening around your house can have impact on how much ventilation you got. So Joseph, no matter how leaky your home is, what is the potential, if you've got a really leaky home, that you're gonna get a well-ventilated home because of that? It is really interesting because it doesn't matter how leaky your home is, on a still warm day or night, you still don't have much ventilation because all the air movement going through the leakiness or the gaps and cracks are all induced by either a temperature difference or wind. If both of them are missing, you won't have ventilation. And the most ridiculous part about even thinking about using that air for ventilating your home is that with that air movement, you're also gonna get mold in your walls. Depend on where you're located in. Well, but at the end of the day, do you really want to breathe what is inside your wall cavity? You don't know what does any other creatures are living inside there. Do you want to take the risk breathing in the residue from any rodent or any other living creatures inside your wall? I'm not a fan of that. All right, so now let's talk about if someone who had COVID-19 was living in a home with a family where only one person was infected, how would you contain them? What, what would you need to do in your mind? Well, we need to have a very well-controlled ventilation and we need to minimize, if not stop, air coming from that bedroom to the rest of the house. So step number one is you need to shut any ducted heating or centralized cooling outlet in that room. So if you let ducted heating air get into that room, it's gonna try and make it back to the return and it could potentially infect someone within that, once that air goes in via the return again and then comes out to the other room. The whole house would That's spread huge. That's huge. All right, so the ducted heating outlet needs to be closed and really you probably shouldn't use the ducted heating. Well, if you have the option, yep. but what I would recommend is shut that particular room's outlet, yep. even put tape over it yep. to minimize any air from okay. the system going into that room. All right. Next Second, step. always keep the window open. Mm -hmm. If there is any extraction system from that room, try to turn it on. Mm -hmm to always keep extracting the room. Mm. But having said that, it worth have a check whether your exhaust system in the ensuite mm. is going into the roof cavity only or directly going outside. Yeah. If it is going to the roof cavity only, yeah. then I would recommend you don't use that. Yes. Just open the window or you may, if you're worried, you may even want to put a fan facing outside, try, yeah, to, it. try to put air out. Yeah, of course. And of course, in winter time, you run a electric heater. Yep. They are cheap. You can get them from any outlet. 
Now, I've heard uh, people say they don't understand why evaporative cooling isn't becoming way more uh, popular because of COVID-19. What are your thoughts on that? It is an interesting proposition. Yeah. But it all comes back to where you want to put the outlet and the people. If you can somehow arrange an outlet facing to a window or an openable door, and the person just sitting right in front of that door or window with the evaporative cooler register blowing to their face, yes, yes, yes. it helps. Yes, but as soon as they move around and become up or downwind to someone who's not infected, then there's a good chance that it's going to create an infection. Well, it, also, it, it doesn't mitigate the risk. So evaporative cooling is not necessarily the way or a way to deal with COVID-19 infection in a household. Well, once again, you need to be able to um, control and direct the air movement. If you can do that, then any method can help. So Joseph, how about apartments? Because this can be quite tricky, especially if there's no windows. Well, for most of the apartment where they comply with the current building regulation is not that much different from a house. The only slight difference is a lot of the apartment may only have window on one side. So you may need to consider to run some ducting around in the house temporarily um, to um, improve the circulation. But for some of the older apartment where they don't have operate, operable windows, then it can be very tricky and fiddly and risky. Um, I think you should um, consult some professional on that. And in those cases, if you um, suddenly got dropped into a scenario where someone may be exposing, then the only thing probably you can do is to get a good filtering system and potentially you can look for some air purifier with HEPA filter and some of them even got um, sterilizing function. Those are your best shot. But how um, well they would work depends on a lot of um, circumstantial situation for your particular apartment. So we can't make a too generalized um, statement on that. So, so Joseph, the article says this, with air purifiers, if they don't have a HEPA filter, they're not worth buying. There's no good evidence for ionizers either. It wouldn't surprise me either if people started buying CO2 monitors to test the quality of their air. And then it goes on to say, but these are all short-term measures. Long-term, we need changes to the building code. What are your thoughts on that? Yes, totally agree. In long term, we need to change the building code. Mm. And to a large extent, the building code is doing a decent work. Mm. They moved from 10, 15 years ago to introduce the requirement on insulation. Mm. Then they realized they need to further improve it by in include air tightness requirement and then um, vapor and moisture control within the construction. They are moving in the right direction. The speed, uh, I'm not too happy about that, but bureaucracy. But straight off the bat, if we're doing a heat recovery ventilation system, say, or, or if it doesn't have heat recovery, but it's a ventilation system and it's got a HEPA filter, right, for air purification, you need air tightness. Otherwise, your filter just has to keep refiltering outdoor air. Well, not just that. The, the interesting part is when you install a filtering and ventilation system, yeah. you expect you get air from the room, go into the system to be filtered and then come back in. Yeah. But when you've got a leaky house, you don't know. You don't know whether the air is short-circuited coming just next to the um, inlet and then got sucked into the system without touching the occupied zone. Yeah. And also, you don't know how the clean air is being distributed. Is it going to the part of the house that really needs it? Usually, we just want fresh air going into bedrooms and living area. We don't care about laundry and toilets. So if you've got a leaky house, you, you have absolutely no control where the air goes. Now, I agree with what they're saying. CO2 monitors are very useful to understand when your house needs ventilation, when you should be operating windows. Parts of this article are actually quite, um, make sense, but then other parts of it 
uh, where, it, where it focuses on air tightness being an issue is just completely bogus. Well, I think the most um, outrageous part of the whole article is the title. Yeah. And what it implies in the title is it makes me feel like, are we going to build a new house every three years when we're facing a different crisis? Yeah. Remember a few years ago when we had the bushfire? Yeah. Everyone was so focused on how can we stop the outdoor air coming in, bringing in all the pollutants. And now they're talking about, no, you, want, you don't want it to happen. Yeah. Are we going to have a stock of houses that we move in on every single crisis? Or are we going to build a house that is adaptable? Yes. And to make a house is adaptable, we need to make it controllable and we need airtight and a centralized ventilation system that yeah. we can choose yeah. whether we bring in outside air or not, or we need to pre-filter all the outside air when the situation is not good. 